This is AutoLine Daily, the show dedicated to enthusiasts of the global automotive industry. Foreign automakers don't like the Biden administration's new rules for EV credits. The U.S. Senate Finance Committee approved a proposal that would boost the EV tax credit from $7,500 to $12,500 by adding $2,500 for EVs built in the U.S. and another $2,500 for union-made EVs. Well, foreign automakers don't like the idea of credits for union-made cars because none of them are unionized. Volkswagen, Honda, and Toyota all released statements asking Congress to apply the tax credits evenly among all automakers and not add more for those with UAW workers. Hainan Island is kind of like the Hawaii of China. It's a tropical vacation destination. It could also emerge as a leader in hydrogen fuel cell cars. A startup called Haima is going to sell passenger cars powered by fuel cells, and it will build five fuel cell stations on the island. Hainan is taking the long view. It hopes to have 2,000 cars for a pilot demonstration in 2025. Meanwhile, China is laying the groundwork to dominate the supply chain for fuel cells and hydrogen, as it has for batteries for electric cars. The city of Beijing just set a goal of having 3,000 fuel cell vehicles on the road by 2023 and 10,000 by 2025. China wants 1,000 hydrogen stations by 2025, and it's going to use the Winter Olympics, which start in six months, as a showcase for its hydrogen refueling. Well, hey, maybe Elon Musk was right about LiDAR after all. Tesla has shown you can operate a vehicle hands-free without the technology, and now Magna will launch a radar-based vision system called ICON that reduces the need for LiDAR. It uses high-def 4D digital radar units, which are more accurate than traditional radar, and they're located in the four corners of the vehicle, the grille, and one on each side. For example, traditional radar might see a wall rather than a tunnel that's up ahead, but digital radar can see the tunnel in a car that's broken down just inside the entrance. It also has the ability to separate a pedestrian from a guardrail or more quickly detect a tire in the road. Magnus says its ICON digital radar system minimizes the need for LiDAR in even level four or five autonomous driving, and it will debut on production vehicles next year. We want to know what drives your testing, OTA, connected car, diagnostics, remote testing, Intrepid Control Systems is here to help you work from anywhere. Intrepid Control Systems, driven by your data. The world is changing at an ever-increasing pace. No matter what the mode of transportation, there is always the need for an efficient propulsion system. And that's exactly what Borg Warner has been doing since the earliest days of the automotive industry. E-bikes and e-scooters are really popular in busy cities and campuses where people travel short distances. And now those services will be even easier to use. Spin, which is the micro-mobility company owned by Ford, is being integrated into Google Maps. So when looking for directions, users will be able to see the nearest available Spin e-bike or e-scooter, including how long it will take to walk to it, its estimated battery range, and expected arrival time. They'll then be directed to the Spin app to pay for the bike or scooter and unlock it. SPIN operates in 84 areas across the U.S., Canada, Germany, and Spain. And at the other end of the spectrum, Ford is showing customers how they can trick out their Bronco with a concept called the Riptide. It's fitted with aftermarket accessories like two doors, a surfboard roof rack, vinyl trim seats, and rubberized floor coating. And since Ford says the Riptide is designed for spontaneous outdoor adventures, It's also equipped with 35-inch mud tires wrapped around 17-inch beadlock wheels, Dana locking front and rear axles, and a high-clearance suspension system with Bilstein shocks. 
like the Jeep Wrangler, you've got to believe aftermarket accessories for the Bronco will be wildly popular. EV startup Canoe found someone who will make its cars. It's teaming up with Nedcar, which is based in the Netherlands, to build its lifestyle vehicle by the fourth quarter of 2022. Even so, Canoe is also going to build its own assembly plant in Oklahoma. It's getting $300 million in incentives from the state and promised it will employ 2,000 workers. Canoe says it has more than 9,500 non-binding pre-orders for its lifestyle vehicle, pickup truck, and multi-purpose delivery vehicle. And we've got another electric pickup to add to the list. EV startup Alpha Motors will show off a prototype of its Wolf Electric pickup at the Peterson Automotive Museum in Los Angeles next week. The truck is a two-seater with ranges between 250 and 275 miles depending on the setup. It has a single motor that drives the rear wheels or dual motors for four-wheel drive. Alpha plans to build the truck in the U.S. starting in 2023, and the company is now taking online reservations. Mobility is becoming electric, connected, and autonomous, just like the manufacturing world. But we'll always be one thing, a reliable partner for our customers. The age of silicones began at Fokker more than 70 years ago. Whether you're looking for thermal management of battery systems or the protection of electronics, let your innovations be powered by Fokker silicones. Visit us at Fokker.com. E-mobility powered by Fokker silicones. Production of Tesla's Cybertruck was recently delayed but that's not stopping one company from designing accessories for the pickup. Streamit, a software and AI company, developed a pop-up camper called the Cyberlander that fits right into the Cybertruck's bed. It features a main area that can be used as a kitchen, sitting room, or bedroom, as well as a small bathroom with toilet, sink, and shower. The Cyberlander will use power from the truck's battery and the solar array that's on its roof which likely makes up for a significant portion of the camper's 1,200-pound weight. But due to its conforming shape when not in use, it's only expected to drag the Cybertruck's range down by about 5%. Since Tesla has not revealed specs on the truck, Streamit says it has designed the camper so its dimensions can be easily changed. That means the Cyberlander is only available in digital renderings. And all the more surprising that so many people have plunked down money on a pre-order for the $50,000 camper. Streamit claims to have raised over $80 million in pre-orders so far. Toyota and Subaru jointly developed the 86 and BRZ sports cars nearly a decade ago, and they're finally getting around to updating them. We just got the opportunity to drive the new 86, and it's better in every way than the outgoing model. By increasing the bore of the 2.4-liter Subaru Boxer engine, it now produces 228 horsepower and 184 pound-feet of torque. That's 23 more horses and about 30 more pound-feet, which doesn't sound like a lot, but the manual transmission model is nearly one second quicker to 60 miles an hour while the automatic is 1.4 seconds quicker. The structure of the body was beefed up with additional braces around the front suspension, as well as around the rear wheel wells. It also gets a more rigid rear subframe. The suspension was retuned, and the center of gravity was lowered by 1.6 millimeters. Put it all together, and you've got an affordable sports car that's a blast at the track. You can drive it fluidly and smoothly, or instantly put it on a nice edge by inducing oversteer with a throttle or steering. The base model's 17-inch wheels make it easy to drift, but if you're after the best lap times, the 18-inch wheels of the premium model will take you deeper and faster through every corner. A large duckbill rear spoiler on the premium model also keeps the car better planted through high-speed turns. The brakes are well-sized for this car, are easy to modulate, 
and a new brake pad composition improves their grip. In short, this is a car for true enthusiasts. In the U.S. market, the new 86 will go on sale in November. Toyota hasn't settled on a price just yet, but it will be around $30,000, including destination charges. But that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks for watching, and we hope you have a great day. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, solutions for your journey. Intrepid Control Systems, over-the-air engineering, boost your game. Borg Warner, propulsion solutions that support a clean, energy-efficient world. Vacher, creating tomorrow's solutions. And by Scheffler, we pioneer motion.